All right. Uh, we have with us today uh, Coach Mike Sutton from Claremont McKenna College. Uh, coach Sutton coached 19 seasons. And you tell me if I get any of this wrong, Coach. You coached 19 yeah. seasons of men's water polo at CMS. In those 19 seasons, you won 15 Skyac titles, 15 out of 19. All right. I think so. Three right. WWPAs. Mm -hmm. Three WWPAs should have been more. Uh, in 2016, <laughs> uh, you were uh, inducted into the CMS Hall of Fame. And in 2022, you were selected uh, one of the 100 greatest college swimming uh, coaches by the College Swimming Coaches. Yeah, how about that? Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, nowhere in your bio does it mention that you coached me. That's right. So, and that we're both left-handed. And that we're both left-handed. <laughs> your bio needs a little bit of an update. High, so high quality information. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Yeah, <laughs> you you were my college coach. You were a great college coach, and I thank you for doing this with me today. My pleasure. And we had a great time. Your four years were my last four years. A four-year group that we really had a great time with and had some real success. You know, you guys were good. So, Either you wanted to go out on top or I put that you was the plan. I figured I, I've got to have an exit strategy after these guys graduate. When the rookie class of the century goes away, what's left, right? <laughs> it's funny. Some of the things you remember, I want to tell you a, a little story of something I remember one of the first meetings we had, and I, I want your thoughts on it. We, we were in the locker room. We were all just having a meeting. We had our clothes uh -huh. on meeting and it was, it was before we started practicing. I was a freshman and you said, I remember this. You said to us, uh, this playing on this team is voluntary. <laughs> but once you make that choice, everything yeah. from here on out is mandatory. Do you remember saying that? I, that was, yes. <laughs> was, that yeah. a, was that a standard thing you said most? Well, it was, it was something that I had to learn over time, right? But, you know, when I was a student athlete, same thing. I chose to be there every day, but... I didn't get to choose when I showed up, right? You know, or or if I was going to show up. It's funny that you mentioned that because I'm helping Charlie now again, uh, Charlie Griffiths, the swim yeah. coach, as a very part-time assistant. And we're in those early stages of his team. And he's got a handful of young guys that that need to remember that you chose to be here. We're happy to have you now be here, right? You know, and so that's it. You know, if we're going to do this, let's do it right. Well, it, I know it struck me. It was kind of like, whoa, okay. Uh, <laughs> but had you not heard that before? No, I hadn't heard it like that before. Uh -huh. yeah. It was kind of cool. It made me feel like I'm part of something that's important. Yeah. yeah. You know? Like, don't come into this halfway. You're going to either, yeah. either come into this or, or leave. Yeah. And I thought that was pretty cool. And so yeah. from then on, I felt like we were all in. There was that's no good. way I was going to miss anything because of because i that already said that <laughs> that's great no that's yeah. great you know it's always interesting to know how people hear what we say right know. you know and so sometimes you have to say it four different ways to to get the message across so one of the things i thought uh, that you did a great job and i also wanted to get your thoughts on is and this is that was part of it was creating the culture mm -hmm. of your teams like, what did you want and then how did you do that did you consciously think to yourself, okay, I have to create this culture. I have to say, do and say these things. Did it happen more naturally? Cause that's the type of guy you are. Like, how did you approach that as a coach? Do you remember? I do. I think part of it is intrinsic and part of it is learned right by running into walls and, and doing, I mean, you know, I, I'm a tactile learner like you. And uh, so it's, it's a, um, it's a matter of figuring out, Hey, what, what do people that, that will choose to come to our place resonate with, right? And the other thing is too, remember the recruiting process. You you chose to come to this college, but there were certain things about it that were characteristics of you. You know, we we all find our people, right? And so what what you really need to do, what I tried to do was find out where's our where's our bell curve? Where's where are our heads at? And how much movement can I make in that if need to be? And there were years where we needed to move it left or we needed to move it right, you know, but, but um, I, I think that was what I tried to do. And I think all of us as coaches, particularly where you're recruiting, who do we most encourage to come, right? If you've got several people who all could be there and, 
and maybe want to be there, or whatever, who are the ones we really emphasize bringing people? Well, we, we want to be with people who see the world similarly, but will help us to be better. Yeah. And so that was that, you know, and that's where I had some impact in the recruiting part. Um, even without the scholarships, it was, it was about how do we find the people that will enhance this group? So yes, environment is a created thing and it's, you tweak it based on the character of the people in the room. And I, I would tell other coaches or young coaches when I was an AD later on, just talking about how, you know, some teams that have great internal leadership, then that group, all you need to do is give it a little bit of, yeah. you know, on this side. And as coach, you can stand back and then you can provide, you know, maybe insights at key moments. If you don't have that great leadership in the locker room or in the pool or whatever, now you need to insert yourself. You need to remind them. But all the while, you're trying to create an attitude and a culture the way you feel about your program, your sport. And I, and I think it transcends sports. I don't think this is anything that um, is unique uh, to water polo or swimming, but it's to coaching. And coaching matters. I mean, I, I will say that again and again. I've said this recently. Um, I spoke. I just spoke to you about Tyler is in his second year at the University of Idaho. This staff that came in, David, took over a, a team that was moribund. They were four and seven football team regularly and just kind of, eh, you know, basically they coached the same men, young men that were there, right? And a few new people and a couple transfers and that. And they turned the locker room around and they went from four and seven to seven and four and to the playoffs and, you know, and all of that. Um, and that's, that's where I've said to others as an example of, your approach and attitude and enthusiasm and focus and getting people to understand what you're going to be about is how you continue to to develop a culture. Um, and you hope you've got strong character. You know, you think about the the people that were upperclassmen when you came in, right? You had Gary and Phelps and and uh, Chris, but you know, Baron. So, so they're good yeah. character people yeah. that that fit in right away. And we had Digo. And, uh, you know, so. <laughs> he wasn't there my freshman year, though. <laughs> so, so that, but I mean, what, I like what, what we said. did was found a way to bring those people together. Right. And right. so, you know, that's a willingness. To... Let me paraphrase what you said. So I, I yeah. make sure that I fully understand, because I, I think you made a couple of really good points. Uh, I want to kind of underline them. So kind of like how an offensive player is supposed to read the defense to, de to decide what to do. You know, you don't just mm -hmm. go off on your own. You read the defense and you make the call like you're. Like you're saying, a coach, you come in and you read your team, if what they need. Do they need a little nudge? Do they need a big nudge based on the leadership you have? Because otherwise, you you don't you don't overcoach that way. You can do the right, right? That's what you're saying. That's right? really important. And to know who you can count on. And and do you have a critical mass of people that are that are on it? Yeah. If you do, then again, you're working with the margins and bringing them in. And that's how you can create a really great team. Yeah. And, um, and I think that if you, you know, when it's, when there are fewer really talented uh, and cooperative people, you have to work that much harder to try to see who's going to buy in and not. And sometimes there's, there's loss cutting that needs to be done, right. Where somebody who's just not figuring it out or not getting on board. And, um, you know, we went through that too, right, David, you know, so yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, those are hard. Those are really hard. You, it feels like as a teacher, you feel like a failure when when you lose somebody, you know. And so that's that's the way it is. Yeah. You were. What was your role on the nineteen ninety two Olympic team? Yeah. So I was called the team leader. I, that's the USOC term. I was the basically the manager. Okay. And so sort of the operations guy, right? So my job was to to help facilitate with all of our logistics and hold the money and the passports and, uh, you know, and make sure we had pool time and to do all that managerial type work. And so um, one of the reasons Barnett liked my ability to help was that, you know, as a coach, I kind of knew there was a certain amount of things that I already knew, you know, and that was just a matter of, of being able to, he could give me some instruction. I could run with it, you know, as opposed to someone who wasn't necessarily uh involved or dialed in in that way you know? how did you get that job did you know bill well it was, it was kind of it was accidental in a way i i did a little bit when um so i got involved in the u.s water polo world during 84 i worked out at pepperdine at the games out there and and so i got to know some people but 
by the time we were finishing up the 88 quadrennial, the, the soul quadrennial, mm -hmm. in that spring, the spring of 88, the U.S. team was doing a promotional tour on the East Coast with Italy. So Italy was coming in. So they were going to do stops down the coast. Well, they were at Harvard, Brown, Navy, went down to Florida. So one of the things that people knew me from our peer group, right? Brown, Navy, oh, that's familiar, right? And so um, so he asked, I was asked if I might be able to help on this trip be, by being the conduit to those coaches. You know, the people that if we're having an event at Harvard, you know, Coach Hafferkamp, can you help us? you know, get, and so, yeah, it's sure. Okay. That'd be fun to try, you know? And, um, so we actually went from, we, we did those stops there. We played in Fort Lauderdale for a game and, um, and then went to Cuba for a tournament at the end. So my first gig was like, Whoa, <laughs> you know, here we are, you know, doing these things. But then I got to see people that I would have coached with and against, right. As we were going up and going down the coast, but I met the Italians at the at New York and picked them up and took them up to Brown. And, you know, so it was kind of while Ratko Rudich was their coach then who became the U.S. coach wow. later. Yeah. So anyway, there was, you know, it was a good a good thing. And I got to meet Terry Schroeder when he was at the very top of his game. Right. He was right after he graduated from Pepperdine and Craig Wilson and, and uh, you know, that that crew right there. Yeah. No. So anyway. I didn't screw that trip up, Dave. I guess that's the deal. I had the opportunity, didn't mess it up. And then later that summer, um, as they were doing their pre-Olympic trip, uh, I was asked to go and join them. And we went and spent two weeks in Hungary training and um, practicing with the Hungarian team. Got to spend two weeks in Budapest. And uh, and again, it was just a, a good, you know, a good time. I, that's great, you know. And when we were done, Barnett said, hey, look, after the games, let's see how things go. But I'd like to talk to you some more about doing this. So that's how I got it. And then, OK, so then how did that what did you learn? <laughs> Can you give me something? I mean, from maybe from Bill Barnett as a coach, uh, maybe from the players being around all those great players. Boy, it was really, you know, going back to the beginning of our conversation is how do you develop a team and a program? Yeah. Right. So I'm sitting here you know, as the, but it was sort of a busman's holiday, right. For me and getting to watch these guys that were such great athletes um, and, and coming in, what I did see was how difficult it was, you know, Terry and Wilson and those older guys that played in 84 and 88, most of them retired in 89 and then came back in 90 and prep for the world championships. And to hopefully finally, you know, they, they've been silver medalists twice, right. So the older crew came back for one more shot at a gold. Then we had all these young guys who were just out of people that, you know, Craig Fisher and I mean, Craig Class, Eric Fisher, uh, David and Bernino, people that that, you know, I'd watched grow up um, through that. They were um, on the uh, Robert Lynn was on that group. Um, so there. So we had this young cadre and then we had these older guys who did it. And. Bill Bill was very much a you know, right. This is how we're going to do it. Okay. And he got some resistance from some of the older guys and to a point where it, it really, he wasn't open to, you know, finding that common ground. He was pretty much a, this, this is the way we're going to do it. And I think that team always was a little bit, they were never just completely unified and bonded. And, uh, for all the talent we had and we knew we had a tough road to hoe you know when we went we we finished we you know we medaled at the world championships that year no we didn't i'm sorry we we finished outside of the medals at the world championships but i remember going with some of the guys to watch the award ceremony and yeah we're this is where we want to be right and then yeah. and the summer the before the um the games the summer before the pan american games they won the world cup and then came back and got beat by Cuba and down in Havana, you know, so it was kind of a, we were kind of a, a up and down kind of a group, right. That went through, but, but really a neat group of, of people. Um, but that just never fully connected the way you all did. And I think it was partly a generational difference on the team. And uh, yeah, the older guys plus mixed with the younger guys. Yeah. And even though they, they got along, wasn't a problem yeah. or anything like that. It was just, it was, um, it was just clash a little bit of a clash of wills terry was already coaching 
you know, he already had his gig. Uh, Wilson had already gone off to work and then, you know, was coming back. And and uh, Mike Evans was part of the, that older group there too, Charlie Harris. And then, then, like I said, we had all these younger guys that were just coming out of college and uh, just had been, you know, in a different world. Um, Pretty cool. I don't know if you know this, but online there's a picture of that team and the, yeah. uh, the title of the picture, um, it says Water Polo Legends. You're in that picture, coach. <laughs> you right. like Duplanty, Vargas. Yeah. Water, yeah. I mean, it's pretty cool. I that was it. fun to be. It was really neat to be around that. And to see Johnny become a coach, John Tanner moved on from. So John Tanner was at UOP during those times. And then he moved up to Stanford to coach Stanford's women. And you know what they've done, right? So, um, and then Dante Denamonte was there. He was the Stanford coach. He was with the staff for two years, Tom Millich. So Dante and Tom, you didn't see in that picture, but you saw uh, Guy Baker. You saw, um, you know, so yeah, like I said, it was it was really cool to be part of that group. Um, but it was also very weird to be a coach, to see some challenges that they had and not really not have, you know, it's not my place, you know, it's and it's a little bit like helping Charlie with the swim team right now. It's his team. You know, and uh, but we've been dear friends for, you know, 20 plus years now. So he also I, I know where to when to be quiet and he'll he asks stuff. So I think that that again, it's that isn't that what's that emotional intelligence that allows you to be observant. So you if, know, that helps, helps if you with coach, if coach Barnett had come to you and said. Mm -hmm. I need I want some advice. <laughs> you might have told him maybe bend a little bit with the older guys I, I would have said what what are you hearing from Shro or what are you hearing from these guys about how we're training or how you know where, where we're going here what do you think it is I think he was very wise actually because I do think what had happened you know not those guys are really good yeah but yeah. but they were also getting a little bit older and so uh, the training was and and we just you know again we were in it for a gold medal we got bracketed to where we were going to have to play the semifinal, semifinal game against Spain in Barcelona. And an international ball, what do you think our chances were? We had to be three goals better just to get to overtime, right? You know, so yeah. you knew, you know, and and that was sure enough, we, you know, we were on a break to go up a goal mm -hmm. and we got an offensive foul called and uh, turns over, score against us. Now we're we're down a goal. And that's that's what happened in the semis right and then uh yeah and then we played uh in the in the bronze medal game i think everybody was pretty flat and uh we had a, an yeah. aggressive young russia team that, that yeah that was a, they called it the unified team right because they just no yeah. uh, it was before that actually it was before it was no i guess it was unified it must have been let me think dave this was 92 yeah so it was after the wall came down so I, I don't exactly remember that. It seems to me we played Russia, but I, I don't think I don't think they were uni the unified group yet. So, yeah. Well, yeah. It's it was it was an amazing experience, David, that opened my eyes because I didn't study abroad. You know, when I was in school, I hadn't been you know out there and I got to travel with the A team. I didn't have to go to some of the backwater places that the juniors and the <laughs> and those uh -huh. guys go. We when we had some amazing that was an amazing time also um you know the wall came down we were staying at spandau the summer before that december when the you know when the uh when the berlin wall came down we were in uh marseille with the the uh, romanian team when ceausescu was hung you know and just yeah. some amazing world events going on all the while that we were there can, can you think of any so being around those legends yeah, yeah. can you think of any skills they had that when you watch the olympians today who are great are, i think are we have some of the best shooters in the world yeah maybe yeah. better now even better now maybe better now maybe yeah. better yeah yeah what skills do you remember maybe from those legends that yeah. you wish some of the guys today had if any maybe not maybe well, they have you know it's it's really that's a really interesting question because you know with the game moving back to 25 meters a lot has changed, right? Our game was about counterattack and then quick attack front court. And um, you, you had to work, you know, the, the game wasn't as physical in the front court as it is now. Mm -hmm. And if you got into a front court situation, 
the perimeter defenders could not just clamp you down. So you couldn't yeah. drive, you could still drive then. So, so it was a, a different game. Some of the things were interesting is, is that what's it, these guys are just bigger, faster, stronger. They filled up more space. So, so the things that they were able to do were to close differently than you or I could yeah. as a person who's six inches shorter. Right. And they get up and down the pool pretty good. Even the the mediocre swimmers were as good as as most of our guys, you know. And so um, so there was that 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 just athletic ability was really was really fun to watch them play basketball. You know, it was fun to you know watch yeah. them do do things outside the pool. Um, but it was interesting too because I think sometimes we just shake our head, and go, yeah, that's the same kind of mistake our frosh soft water polo players are making, right? You know, it's just. Again, it's a different game when you're in the water, you know, and people are leaning on you and stuff. Sometimes you you don't do what you're supposed to do. I, I know Barnett was just, oh, my God, he was a maniac about, you know, releasing and how you release. And it would just he would just drill that over and over and over. To, like a, like to a guys, release? Oh, eyes are rolling back in their head just so that they would step away from their people, because if you don't give a space. You end up throwing a ball over a defender instead of around a defender, right? And it was trying to create a passing lane that would work. Um, those are things that I see today are not as, um, you know, just don't seem to be as innate. And I think you never played in our small pool, but when we were playing 25 yard ball, we would do a very structured small pool counterattack where the ball wouldn't even, we try not to put it on the water if we avoided yeah. to, right? We'd have square outs at mid tank. We'd go down the, down the line and we try to pick the right square out. So we would see which side the was ball side for the breaker coming down and we feed that side. So everybody had a space to go to and the ball went boom, boom, assist, right? Yeah. If we had a counterattack, when you stretch it out to 30 meters, there's it there's so much more time to develop it right and now we've gone back to the 25 meters where it's six strokes and pot you know i mean and seven you know it's um it's such an and then once you get there you've got more time in the front court and it's just so damn physical that it's just a little chess game of how to get the ball into the post right yeah. and if you do it right you probably get a man up you know probably get a six five or you know so so the skills were just a bit different. The two meter skills of holding and set and making yourself available to the entry pass, pretty much the same as what we're working on today, right? And, I see people, you you mentioned releases. I see a yeah. lot of people when I watch high school and even some college, uh, they'll just back up from their guy. Yeah, right. Is just the worst, worst thing you could possibly so, uh, And there's a couple of problems with that, right? You've got a defender in your lane yeah. and the ball's got an arc to get to you so it's harder to catch yeah. and it takes longer so the it's just like in basketball the the time it takes to transition from one side of the court you know when they rotate the ball side to side yeah. pretty easy for the defense to slide in the lanes the next right. side right right and if you if you don't go in first you're just going out then you end up on the edge of the pool you're further away from set it's easy right. to there's all kinds and then of here's one of the challenges today too since a perimeter defender is not called for putting two hands on you and holding you. It's yeah. harder and harder to go into a guy. Mm. So the V out of the old days is yeah. a lot more difficult to do. You, you've got to start at an angle. Otherwise you're just going to get held right. Or get an offensive and yeah. then kick out, but you still, you've got to time it well. So that you're the person who's pat and, and the person who's passing the ball needs to expect that move too. And that's something I just see as a lack. I mean, I watch, our games, our, I watch our stag play right now, as good as they are. And we got some really, really good sized guys. I mean, Johnny would be relatively short, wow. you know, and you and I would be the munchkin guys out there, right? But we'd be playing because we're lefties. So, <laughs> well, you, you see yeah, that. We, we, if you could wave a magic wand on these guys, you would, you would have them release better. Oh, exactly. I'd have them stop passing the ball over people and, yeah. you know, find the eight. And get an angle, right? You know, so yeah. Well, that because you, so much else is good and right, and yeah, when the it, when know. the timing is right on the release, it just kills the defense. Exactly, the defender good. can't keep up with you, right? That's right. And if you want to win on six on five, those one six passes, uh, you know, come on, it's got to be a it's got to be a larger triangle, and and we do too much one to two or one to 
what is it, one hundred one to four to five to six. Right. The clock's running that whole time, right? Yeah. And I know you're moving the defense, but you're not moving them the same way you could with large triangle. But again, the challenge you got there is you got probably got a defender in your lane, so you got to arc the ball, right? So again, one and six have to rotate up and down to give a passing lane. It's, you know, there's just so much more movement. And you you, you see the, um, the teams that play all year together doing a far better job of that than, again, we're we're still playing mostly just in our season, even though we have a little bit out of season practice, but we don't have summer teams or that. So it takes a while to get to that. And I, I would hope, you know, that I will con see continued improvement on that. Cause I know that's what, I know that's what coach is working on, you know, yeah. and, uh, but I still think that in the small pool, you could see a very effective counterattack at 25 meters. If you structure it. So you, so you're not getting all the way out to the wings or you're not just swimming straight down the pool and then getting four guys or five guys down at two to three meters. Right. And I played a, I played an alumni game at Sunny Hills high school years ago, like 10 years yeah. ago. You remember yeah. Sunny Hills used to be like a powerhouse. They mm -hmm. used to feed sure. you. When Jim, Jim built that Sprague built that yeah. program. Right. right. So, yeah. so the alumni team we were playing were all those guys that were winning CIF year after yeah. year. They were, it was all those guys. They were like 40 and 50 years old, but they were <laughs> guys. Yeah, and I remember I went to wing out just a normal wing out and we were in one of those small pools. Yeah. And this old guy, Mike, he rode me into the gutter before I could wing out. <laughs> and as as he was right, I was like this and he was riding me. And as I was and riding, stuck as your head in the gutter. Out, yes. yeah. As he was riding me out, I thought this is a great move. He's doing oh, yeah. a great move on me right now. This is great. Right. He's not allowing me to wing out. And I thought, right. man, that got drilled. He's a 50-year-old man right. doing that move in a pool. That got drilled into him. You talked about Barnett sure. drilling and drilling and right. drilling. That's right. So this, he's forcing the ball to the other side yes. by doing that. He's yes. also taking himself out of the defense by doing that. He is. Right? He so is. so okay. those are all the... You know, there's pluses and minuses about everything. I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. I'll say he looked down and saw that no one was up and then yeah. rode into the gutter. Or maybe he just enjoys riding young kids into the gutter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and did he ask you for a toe over to the front no, court after it was he done? Didn't. No, he didn't even. I think, I think I was <laughs> laughing at the time. I was like on my back. I, I... It was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. He said, man's game, son. Man's game. I know. I know. I love it. I love oh, it. Geez, it's it's very cool. interesting, Coach. I appreciate you taking the time to talk to me today oh, about David, polo. I know we, we could talk for another hour. Uh, but we seeing you and thinking of you and the boys just you know bring a lot of joy to my heart. So I mean, again, that was a very special group of people. We did some good stuff. We we came close to some great stuff, right? I mean, that's the thing is we were in them. We were in it, and maybe we didn't make the championship game at the WWPA, but we. You know, we we got it pretty close, and we learned some tough stuff in that. You know, up at Air Force that year, that whole mm -hmm. you know, Santa the four being in a four or five game. How yep. do you prepare for that game, right? Yep. You know, you don't look ahead. You better get with it done. The, with the benefit of time that's gone on. When I look back, um, those four years were so unbelievable, and yeah. you, you set the table for that. And I know we we did our part too. Uh, but you as the coach set the table for that. And I, I'm always grateful to you. Thank for that. you. So thank you, Mike. Yeah. And it goes back at you too, you and the guys for, for being who you were for enlivening my life. And I think all good teams out there do that for their coaches. They, they enliven that life and make it worth coming back and, and making it fun to come to, you know, come to the pool every day, right? Not Absolutely. coming to work, coming yeah. to the pool no. every day. That's an under that's an underrated thing, having fun coming to the pool, right? It can't just Amen. be drudgery. Otherwise, you're just gonna quit, right? I mean, it's gotta it's, be fun. Then it becomes like work. Yeah. yeah. You know. So yeah. Thanks, Mike. Well, you have a great day. You. Good luck to you and all your programs, David. Thank you for inviting Thank you, me. Coach. Yeah. I'll talk all to right. you soon. Okay. I'll be in touch. Yeah. Bye-bye. Right. Bye. -bye. Bye.